What's going on guys, I'm the player here and today we will be talking all about how to farm the Stolen Wall shotgun and the best methods and loadouts to do this efficiently while it's the nightfall. If you use these methods and also get a bit lucky you can do an entire nightfall run in just 5 minutes. I'll also be going over what the best perks to get on the Stolen Wall because some perks can turn this weapon from decent to actually really good. So obviously this week's Nightfall is the Taken Winter's Run Strike and this means you can actually farm it for the weapon and keep running the Nightfall over and over again and if you didn't know your odds of getting strike specific loot items is much higher when it's the Nightfall Strike so now is the time to farm and I would highly recommend farming this even if you don't want the shotgun or if you already have one. It's probably the best farming method in the game right now to farm 335 special weapons. By the end of this you're going to end up with a load of infusion fuel and then on top of that you'll also be getting a load of Vanguard rep in the process. It's also the first nightfall you do of the week will give you a huge chunk of rep and all the others you do after that will give you good rep as well. So make sure you pop a rep boost up while you do this. So for the normal strike section up to the boss, it's relatively easy. The Celesto is probably the best choice because it's specialist modifier on. That means you can do splash damage to a lot of adds. And also if you get multi kills with Telesto, it's going to generate you loads of ores, which is really helpful. And that's going to counteract the trickle modifier, which normally has your super generate really slowly. And you're going to need your super for the very end boss fight. So make sure you have one. And Telesto generating orbs is really helpful. So when you get to this section, sometimes you can actually get lucky and you only need to kill like one enemy and the door opens. It's really weird and it seems to be like RNG which version you happen to get. As you can see in this gameplay, sometimes you literally get here, loads of enemies will spawn, you kill one and the door opens. You spend like 30 seconds here, which is really nice. If your ghost says it's open, just go ahead and don't feel the need to kill any of the enemies spawning. You can literally just go ahead, but quite often you will have to stay and fight a bunch of enemies. So it's random which one you get. So if you do have to stay and fight enemies, which happens most of the time, to be honest, you will definitely want the Celesto or a high impact sniper with arc damage I'd recommend so you can take out those super annoying centurions. When it gets to this section, just speed through and your sparrows together and make sure you stick together. If you separate, then one person will normally take all the fire and get destroyed. But if you stick together, you can share the damage and make it through. But like I said, the run up to the boss fight is really easy. Just breeze through it really. And the boss fight is where it gets really interesting because if you do it wrong, you'll be there for a very, very long time. But if you use the right strategies, you can get through it in just seconds. So let's talk about classes. If you can, definitely try and get a Defender Titan and a Night Stalker Hunter. Now, two tethers and a bubble works very well. That's what we did right here. And as you can see, me, Okim, or Consult destroyed him in 20 seconds with high impact snipers. I think two tethers and a bubble is the best because when one tether runs out, you can use the other one and you can constantly have one going. I think two titans and one tether would also work because you can have one bubble for weapons of light and one bubble for blessing. And blessing will be really helpful because with the explosion modifier, that'll let you keep your health protected. But if you only have one bubble, stick to weapons of light. It's definitely the most important one. If you do have to have any warlocks, I'd say put them on Sunsinger for self res. These can also be good because you can just damage the boss a load until you die from all the ads. And when you self res, you'll have a load of extra health and be really difficult to kill because the ads take ages to kill you with the explosion modifier on. In the meantime, you should be able to take the boss down and be able to finish off his health because you can tank a load of damage in Radiance, especially with exposure. The tether and the bubble really do make a massive difference and they're so important to the strategy because if you don't melt his health instantly and let the ad spawn, it can get really messy and you can be there for 5 to 10 minutes. I'm sure you already know just how annoying and difficult the Taken Mages can be, especially in the later rounds when the Centurions start spawning. They come with a load of health and they'll start blinking around and also they have these Vex which will just shield them and make them invincible and hide around corners. And they can be so difficult, so if you give him enough time to spawn all these adds, you'll basically be pinned into the starting area like we were sometimes and it basically makes things so much more messy. So you really do want to try and melt him as quick as possible and don't let him spawn those adds because if he does, you'll be there for quite a while and it can make things really drawn out. So try and melt him as possible and that's why I say the bubble and the tether are really important to this. In terms of weapons, of course, high impact snipers are going to be your best bet. I don't think there's any other option, to be honest. Try and get a sniper with triple tap so you can have a bigger magazine. And also, Black Spindle probably is the best option, technically, if you have one of those. But if you don't, then a high impact sniper will do just fine. None of us are using Black Spindle in this method. We're all using Thousand Yard Stairs and LDRs and normal sniper rifles. So with the tether and weapons of light on, I was getting 39k damage on him per shot. And that is basically the strategy. That's how you're able to melt him super quickly. It may take you until the second or third try to actually get the boss fight down and start destroying him in 20 seconds like we did here because the first few times we did actually mess up a few times and the ad started spawning it made things a lot more drawn out we spent more time on here than we did the entire strike so like i said make sure he doesn't spawn those ads and eventually you will get the hang of it and you'll learn just how to do it in the process so out of the six strikes i did in one sitting i got four stolen more shotguns to drop out of them you can see them all here Three of them are 335 and one of them is 334. So like I said, great infusion of fuel. And every time we did a strike, someone got a stolen wheel. So every single time, one of the three of you are probably going to get one. You got a very, very good chance of getting one. And often, two out of the three of us actually got one. So the odds of them dropping are really high. Like I said, Nightfalls are the best time to farm. And you can walk away with a load of really good shotguns and also infusion of fuel are the ones you don't want. So let's talk about the perks and what to actually look for on these stolen wheel shotguns. So in the first column of barrels, it doesn't actually matter too much. So I wouldn't worry about them. The first slot is where it matters really. You need to get full auto. So full auto is the perk for the stolen wheel. It turns it from an okay weapon to actually really good 
The Stone Wheel is not a PvP shotgun because it's not the high impact archetype. It is usable and you could have fun with it if you want, but the Conspiracy Theory D and the Party Crash will always be the best options for PvP. However, in PvE, the Stone Wheel can do really impressive damage. So try and get one with full auto in this first category is honestly the make or break perk. And second to that, I'd say it's range finder and also crowd control. Those are decent perks, but like I said, full auto is the main one you want. In the middle column, there's only one real option, and that is a reinforced barrel, and that's going to boost the range, which is the number one priority for shotguns. And if you can't get that, small bore is also going to boost it by a little bit, but not as good as reinforced barrel. That is the number one, and that's going to boost the range by a good bit. If you can't get any of those range boosting options, I think a high caliber rounds is also a good option. That's going to stagger the enemies in PvE, which is nice as well, and rock them back while you do more damage to them. In the last perk slot, I'd say the best choice is performance bonus, and this is going to give you more ammo when you get kills. It's really good because of how little special ammo you get these days, and it's really nice to get kills and get a few shots refunded back into reserve ammo. So that is a really good option. I think the second best one is going to be final round. This is always a really good one for shotguns, I believe. I think this is good in PvE because you can do more damage to a tanky boss or major who has loads of health in the last round is going to do bonus damage. So those are my recommendations of perks and also my strategy of how to farm this weapon as fast as possible. Comment down below and tweet me how many certain wheels you guys have and if you picked up any with nice perks. I'm sure a ton of you guys already have. If you found this video helpful then be sure to give a like rating. I'd appreciate that. Hope you guys did enjoy the video. Subscribe to so you don't miss out on my future uploads and I'll see you guys in the next one.